Um, thank you very much for this invitation, and I'm sorry for the delay. Um, my name is Donggyun Kim from Hongik University, and um, um, my topic is about um, a rainfall scenario generator uh, considering climate changes. So weather generator, what is weather generator? Weather generator generates the uh, realistic hydrologic forcing variables for the modeling studies. For example, it can generate rainfall, evapotranspiration, temperature, and um, it's basically a computer um, algorithm or a program that can synthetically generate this uh, time series or space-time field of these uh, hydrologic forcing variables. So for example, a rainfall generator generates the uh, rainfall time series, for example, and this is the observed rainfall, and this is the uh, synthetically generated the rainfall using the rainfall generator, even though they look really different, but their statistical uh, characteristics is uh, very similar. So where is this uh, stochastic rainfall generator used? Uh, firstly, it is widely used for the uncertainty estimation. Uh, it can be used for the uncertainty analysis of variable, various hydrologic variables, such as uh, water variables, rainfall-related uh, uh, variables. So for example, flood, drought, landslides, fate of pesticides, or water availability. Um, typical example is like this. Um, our traditional framework, we put this uh, design rainfall, one uh, single design rainfall into the urban flood modeling, and we get this uh, floodplain, one single floodplain. But if we have the rainfall generator, we can generate synthetic rainfall time series of which statistical uh, characteristics is similar to the observed rainfall. And we have infinite length of this uh, time series and we put this into the, uh, as the input of the urban flood modeling, for example. And then we also randomly draw uh, the uh, curve number, uh, intestinal soil moisture condition and lag time. Um, and then we... Um, perform the model, and for each of the time series and, uh, time series and then combination of this uh, curve number, AMC and lag time, we have one uh, floodplain. And when we repeat this analysis, and we get, as a result, we get many, many uh, floodplains. And then uh, if we do this statistical analysis, we can quantify the risk that's related to flooding. For example, we can know what is the uh, probability density or distribution of the 100 year flood plain or uh, probability of the 100 pro probability distribution of 100 year flood damage so instead of using one um, so this is a typical example in which stochastic rainfall generator is used, uh, is used for the uncertainty estimation and also it can be used for the uh, data gap filling so this is the map of the uh, world showing the location of the um, rain gauges, but many, many areas, um, even though there are many rain gauges, some of the areas are needing the rainfall data, do not have the rainfall data, but they need the rainfall data, for example, to develop the water resources plants and stuff. Uh, for this area, this stochastic rainfall generator can provide the uh, rainfall data. Um, and last uh, and most uh, recent use of this rainfall generator is because we don't have any rainfall data for the future period, because it's future. So um, if we uh, search for the weather generator or rainfall generator, we can see that it is always related to the, most cited articles are always related to the climate change. Here, climate change and climate change. So uh, it, uh, this uh, rainfall generator can be coupled with the result of the um, global circulation model or regional circulation model to uh, generate the rainfall scenario for the future period. There are many, many rainfall generators. The simplest form is a uh, Markov chain, but uh, one of the most widely used rainfall generator is a Poisson cluster rainfall generator. Uh, According to this uh, person cluster rainfall generator, it uh, conceptualizes this uh, rain, uh, rainfall as follows. This big uh, red, uh, black circle is the rainstorm. And then rainstorm has many rain cells, which actually contains the rain or water inside. And then if this type of uh, rainstorm uh, goes through this area just like this. Interesting, right? Yeah. <laughs> 
And at this uh, red point, what you are going to observe is as follows. Uh, this is a right? and then Poisson process. Uh, this this is the rainstorm, big uh, big uh, circle here. So Poisson, uh, this rainstorm arrives in time according to a uh, Poisson process, yeah. and then uh, the parameter that uh, determines this uh, Poisson arrival of the rainstorm is the uh, lambda. And then each of and the uh, special extent of the rainstorm is conceptualized as a uh, this uh, temporal period, and then uh, this uh, boundary of each uh, rainstorm is called a storm activity, and this value is randomly drawn from exponential distribution. And then for each of the rain cell rainstorm. It contains the rain cell, and rain cell arrives in time according to another independent Poisson process, like this. So uh, parameter beta is the um, parameter that determines the Poisson arrival of these rain cells. And each of the rain cells will have a random depth and a random duration, like this. And the duration of the, uh, each rain cell is first we uh, randomly draw a uh, uh, number from a two-parameter gamma distribution, and that number then again is used as the, uh, that is the, uh, that number, the randomly drawn number is the parameter of the exponential distribution. And then from that exponential distribution, we um, randomly draw this rain cell duration, and rain cell depth, rain cell intensity, is randomly drawn from a exponential distribution. And for each of the storm, we have this uh, repetition of the rain cell arrivals and the random depth and random duration. It will be like this. And by repeating this process, we generate the rainfall. So uh, there are six parameters that we need to run this model. So if we have these six numbers, we give these six, uh, six numbers to the model, and it will generate the rainfall with uh, rainfall time series with the infinite length. So next question is, how do we determine these uh, six parameter values, uh, which determines the randomness of this, uh, regularity of the randomness of the rain, uh, rainfall um, phenomena? So typically, uh, when, how do we determine the synthetically generated rainfall is similar to the observed rainfall. How do we know it? Um, we usually use the second order stationarity if the two time series has a, uh, the moment, first and the second moment of the two different time series is similar. We usually say that uh, those two time series is quite similar. So we consider the mean of the observed rainfall, which is the first moment, uh, should be similar for the observed rainfall and the synthetic rainfall. And then variance of the observed rainfall and the synthetic rainfall should be similar. And then autocorrelation or co covariance, this, these two are the uh, second order um, moment of the observed rainfall and synthetically generated rainfall. And the lastly, pro probability of dryness. The, at a given time step, what is the probability that it is not going to rain? So if these four statistics are similar, we usually uh, say that uh, the synthetically generated rainfall and observed rainfall is similar. So very luckily, in 1988, Dr. Rodriguez Trube um, derive this equation. The left-hand side is the um, rainfall statistics. This is mean, variance, covariance, and probability of dryness. And then uh, right-hand side is the, um, uh, the expressed in terms of these six parameters. So we can basically calculate the left-hand side of the equation using the observed rainfall time series. And then right-hand side is the uh, composed of six terms. So we have four equations and six unknowns. So it will give us the infinite number of the solutions, right? So we need uh, more, uh, more equations. So how do we obtain more equations? Uh, we consider uh, different uh, aggregation level of the time series. For example, th these are all the uh, <coughs> time series observing the same uh, rainfall occurrence, but this one has the one hour time step, three hour time step, 12 and 24 hour time step. 
So we, and for each of the uh, this uh, rainfall time series, we can calculate uh, uh, different rainfall statistics. And now we have uh, 16 equations, but six unknowns, right? So in this case, we cannot find a um, solution, uh, solution that perfectly satisfies all these 16 equations because we have more equations than unknowns. So in such case, we um, minimize this objective function. Um, uh, here, uh, how do you say? The FK, large FK here, is uh, uh, the, the right-hand side of the equation. And, and um, here, FK is the um, observed rainfall statistics. So if the observed rainfall statistics and then the synthetically generated rainfall statistics uh, by the six parameters is similar, this term is going to be close to 1. And 1 minus this one it will be um, close to 0. So we, if we can find these six parameters which minimizes this objective function values, uh, we can um, find a parameter set which minimizes the difference between the uh, observed rainfall time series and then uh, synthetically generated rainfall time series. So this is quite complicated job because uh, as you see, the numerical uh, format of this equation, this is uh, quite unlinear and then hard to solve by hand. So we developed this uh, isolated particle sum optimization algorithm, and I'd like to explain you briefly about this. This is uh, a lot of fun. So this x-axis is the parameter value, and y-axis is the objective function value. So for example, let's, find, let's uh, consider that we need to find the location at which the object objective function value is the greatest. And, and this particle sum optimization, we usually scatter this uh, set of uh, red birds and blue birds here. And then here's a green uh, bird and this is a yellow bird here. We um, scatter the particle like this. And then these red uh, birds can communicate with each other and these blue birds can also communicate with each other. But this uh, green bird and yellow bird, they are just stuck here, right, at the boundary. Yes, and let's see what happens. This, this red bird tells the other bird to, uh, to come near to him because uh, this one has the highest objective function value, like this, right? Ooh, it's too fast. Like this, right? And then blue bird, this one is the highest one, so this one also goes to this location. And then this process repeats, like this. And then th as this uh, process is repeated, the location of these red birds will converge to a uh, certain value. And this lo uh, average location of these uh, birds are fixed uh, uh, within a certain uh, uh, boundary or thre uh, threshold. This location will be regarded as the um, location of the you know, maximum objective function value. But what about these guys? These guys is right stuck here. Because these guys are stuck here, this location can also be considered as the uh, identified solution. So what you did to resolve this issue is to uh, replace this yellow bird with the green bird. And these, are, these can communicate with each other. And at some point, they will, as the uh, process repeats, this will uh, also converge to a certain location. So um, this uh, is the actual objective function uh, surface. And by repeating this process, we can identify the uh, optimal solution. Uh, this is very simplified one-dimensional case of the optimization. But if we apply this to six-dimensional problem, it is even hard to um, uh, visualize. So what I did is, for example, for one uh, identified solution, we have six parameters. And then we fixed four uh, identified parameters. So the uh, variation of the objective function value with regard, with regard to the uh, remaining two parameter set. So this bluest portion is the location of the lowest um, objective function value. And this white uh, cross is the location where we identified the, um, the solution. So we can see that this white cross coincides with the uh, bullish portion of the objective function surface, which basically means uh, our optimization function 
works quite well. So um, this is the effort that I did after I, uh, we developed uh, this optimization algorithm. I, I identified six parameter sets for all these um, 3,444 uh, gauges across the United States. And then for each of these uh, points, we will have uh, six parameter values. So what I did was I made a map of these six parameters. And the strength of this map is because we can obtain the parameter values at any given location, any, uh, any given locations, we can basically uh, generate the rainfall time, static rainfall time at any given locations in this uh, map. Uh, we don't have to have the rainfall data. So this is the first effort that I did, and I implemented it as a web application. Let me show you. You guys can go to this website, and this one. No. Yeah, you specify, specify the month to generate the rainfall, and then click on, cl click on any locations in this United States map. It will generate the synthetic rainfall time series in the matter of 10 seconds. Previously, it took uh, many, many, uh, even many, many days because you need to obtain the data, process the data, and then optimize the uh, 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 parameter calibration and stuff like that. So now it's really um, uh, easy. So um, in the back end of this application, we have this parameter map sitting behind. So whenever we click on this location, this application gets these six parameter values and then uh, use the algorithm to re uh, generate rainfall. So you guys are always welcome to use this application, let it rain that info. So last year, for the last year, we have some 1,300 visits from 60, around 60 countries, uh, South Korea uh, here, in the United Kingdom, United States, Russia, and Brazil, Germany, and stuff, and so on. So this is the validation. The x-axis is the... Uh, oh. Statistics of the simulated rainfall, si uh, synthetic rainfall, and y-axis is the observed rainfall. This is the mean, variance, autocorrelation, and then probability of zero rainfall. And this is hourly, and three hourly, 12 hourly, and tw uh, 24 hourly uh, time step, aggregation level. So we can see that the, um, diff um, the scatters uh, concentrated uh, near one to one line, meaning that uh, statistics of the observed rainfall and synthetic rainfall is uh, quite similar. Uh, but what about the uh, extreme values? Does it reproduce the extreme values well? Uh, unfortunately not. Uh, the x-axis is the uh, extreme value, uh, design rainfall estimated from observed value, observed rainfall. And this is the design precipitation uh, estimated from synthetically generated rainfall. Uh, all the points are concentrated uh, under the one-to-one -one line, meaning that the extreme values uh, generated by synthetically generated rainfall uh, will be always smaller than the um, uh, extreme value of the observed rainfall. So we actually applied how much difference it will make, extreme value. So this is the result. Um, urban flooding modeling, we applied this urban flood modeling. And then for the 20 year recurrence interval, the flooded area of the, based on synthetic rainfall and uh, observed rainfall is similar, but for the large uh, rainfall event, the flooded area uh, differs significantly. So we need to do something about this to enhance the extreme value reproduction. And also uh, climate change, you know, um, it, is, uh, it basically, um, assumes non-stationarity of the um, rainfall time series, but Poisson cluster rainfall model, we use one single uh, set of statistics, which is stationary. So we need, to do, we need to do something about this to make the model, can cons such that the model can uh, consider the um, non-stationarity of rainfall. So challenges to overcome in this field is first, we need to modify the model such that it can uh, generate the extreme values well. Also, we need to uh, resolve the matter of non-stationarity. Um, so, interannual variability, uh, play, it's, it turned out that interannual variability of the rainfall plays a significant role. Uh, for example, uh, 
Let me show you. Um, this is the uh, each of the dot represents the rainfall mean of the specific month of a specific year. For example, June 1996, June 2003, and June 2007, and June two, uh, 1989. And this value is the mean of the entire rainfall time series, June 1983 to June 2016. And parameter estimation, when we do the parameter estimation, we use this uh, rainfall statistics instead of uh, uh, considering all these uh, uh, interannual variability of the rainfall mean. So what happens when we only use this rainfall mean for the parameter calibration is this. Uh, while the actual um, interannual variability of rainfall is this, uh, the interannual variability of the synthetically generated rainfall uh, convert, uh, is uh, concentrated near this uh, rainfall mean of the entire period. And what's more important is that r extreme rainfall is always related to this uh, large, large event uh, circled by this uh, red uh, line. So Poisson cluster model um, fails to uh, reproduce this uh, um, interannual variability. And this thing turned out that uh, related Turned out, it turned out that this thing is related to this uh, uh, persistency, persistence of the rainfall. So, if the rainfall time series is intercorrelated with regard to the with regard to the time, um, so this um, graph is uh, by Mar Marco Marani in 2001 in some paper, uh, some article, journal article. The x-axis is the the time step. The, aggregation interval of the uh, rainfall, and then this is the variance. So if the rainfall has a memory, or they are correlated with each other, they will have the uh, slope here. Uh, that is um, between one and two. But if the rainfall does not have any memory, it will be uh, close to one to one. And this uh, difference here uh, is basically the, uh, if, uh, this difference actually makes the, uh, this underestimation of the interannual variability. Let me show you. So this thing has been uh, constantly observed uh, for most of the rain gauges. And the reason is because the uh, Poisson process does not have any memory. So uh, here is a uh, s slope value here is one to one, so this uh, result in the underestimation of the interannual vari annual variability. Sorry. And uh, the graph here is the x-axis is the degree of the uh, monthly variance un underestimation. As we underestimate the monthly variance more and more, the ratio of the design rainfall uh, increases, meaning that the degree of underestimation increases. So in, uh, instead of just using this one single value for the par parameter calibration, the approach that we took is generate this uh, rainfall uh, mean for each of the year. And then for each of the generated rainfall mean, uh, we estimate the parameters. And then generate the rainfall mean. So for example, we generate the rainfall mean for a specific, uh, for an individual month of an individual year. And then we have, uh, we also need uh, uh, other rainfall statistics to you to the, uh, for the parameter calibration. So we generated these uh, all uh, parameters based on the intercorrelation between these rainfall statistics. And then we have these uh, parameters. And then based on these param generated parameters, we estimate the parameter, parameter of a given month, uh, of one individual month, and then generate the rainfall over one individual month, and then we repeat the process. So in this framework, if we want to generate the 100 years of rainfall, we need a 100 uh, parameter set. In, uh, previously, we've been using only one parameter set. So this is the result of the uh, improvement. Um, x-axis is the recurrence interval of the design precipitation. Y-axis is the uh, degree of uh, underestimation. The so previous uh, in the traditional framework, the degree of underestimation increases as the design, uh, the recurrence interval increases, but our approach is pretty much robust. 
uh, against this uh, recurrence interval. So which, this uh, basically means that our uh, approach takes advan uh, the, um, deals with the uh, institution values pretty well. And we need to also do the uh, incorporate, uh, incorporation of future uh, rainfall trend. And so we use this uh, GCM result. Uh, especially we use the uh, HADGEM2 result. And then this is the um, rainfall mean of the um, GCM model. And this is a moving average. And we modeled this uh, moving average using um, um, uh, second order uh, uh, polynomial equation. And then we introduced uh, this concept of change factor. Change factor basically means the uh, ratio of the future rainfall to the current rainfall. So um, this is the result of the, um, and then based on this uh, well, um, polynomial modeling and residual analysis, we generate, the, um, randomly generate the change factor. And this is the original change factor and this small dots represents the generated change factor. So our framework is as follows. The, we generate the mean of the rainfall for the current period and then we uh, ex how do you say, uh, modify it by using the change factor and then we get the rainfall mean of the future period and then based on this we generate all the remaining parameters, uh, um, rainfall statistics for the parameter calibration. So previous framework is this and then our framework is now this. Um, just the difference is just change factor. So this is the uh, comparison between comparison of the rainfall statistics and mean standard deviation, covariance, and probability of the rain rainfall is reasonably well uh, reproduced uh, for the all months. This is results uh, result is for the Korean uh, Peninsula, by the way. And the extreme value is also pretty well reproduced. And uh, this is the one of the interesting uh, results that we got using this uh, uh, rainfall generator. Uh, this is the result for the Korean Peninsula. As you can see, this uh, and y-axis is the uh, um, degree of uh, design rainfall uh, of the future to the current. So you can see that the uh, hourly rainfall increase is a lot significant than the daily rainfall increase. Yeah, um, and here's the summary. I, a framework for hourly future rainfall generation is suggested based on the person close to rainfall model. And the suggested approach produces the both usual rainfall statistics, mean standard deviation, or correlation, and probability of zero rainfall, and also extreme values very well. Yeah. Thank you.